even though everyone dreams of one day owning a new home, whether it's a brand new community created by a builder or a custom build on an empty lot or in an existing neighborhood, the reality is that most families simply cannot afford a new home construction. Well, thanks to a wonderful organization known as Habitat for Humanity, they help deserving families with new home ownership. Mark Rogers, president and CEO of Habitat for Humanity Canada, is with me now. It is such a delight to have you here. Thanks, Val. Great to be with you this morning. It's, I mean, this organization has been around for a while, and uh, anybody in the media has worked with you and, and has been inspired by you. So let's talk a little bit about what you do. Okay. Uh, there, Despite the fact that you've been around for a while, there is this yeah. misconception that you kind of give away homes like a lottery. Right. How does it really work with Habitat for Humanity? Yeah, well, thanks for asking that because that's actually the number one myth that we tackle all the time, people thinking that we actually just give away homes. The reality is we're an affordable home ownership program. So families qualify through our program. They're selected through uh, certain criteria. They go through a training process, and they actually purchase the home from us. Uh, the magic of our program, however, is that they're purchasing it at uh, no interest, uh, and it's no down payment. So it's a, we sometimes refer to in the past as kind of a hand up, not a handout. But the idea is that uh, they will, in lieu of the down payment, they will put in about 500 hours of volunteer labor. They call that sweat equity. Uh, sweat equity. We used to call it sweat equity anyway. We, we, we think of them as, uh, as volunteering their time. So they'll either put that into their training, uh, actually building the house, or other uh, community efforts as well. Uh, but it is uh, based on a no, no interest mortgage and so it provides them an opportunity to get into home ownership where they might not have been able to under a conventional means. There's something about owning your own home that really builds that sense of pride and self-worth. Is that why it's important that you not give away these homes, that people have to have to really participate in the ownership of them? Yeah, absolutely, and we see that every time. We often, uh, as we're uh, moving folks into the homes, we'll have what we call a key ceremony or a dedication ceremony. Uh, you only have to go to one of those to just be completely wrecked by the experience, meaning uh, when you see the pride of uh, the families that are obtaining their own home when you hear their stories. Uh, I've been with Habitat for 17 years. I still get all welled up once I go to a key ceremony because you can't help feel the, the emotion, the, the struggle that they've had, the uh, effort that they've put into this journey. And so there's a lot of pride. And that's, that's really important when they obtain the house as well because that means they're going to look after the house and care for it and they're going to be part of the neighborhood and part of the community. And so there's a lot of good things that come with, with home ownership. Such a great organization, such great things happening to people, but you could not do this without your volunteers. Yeah, How yeah. many do you have? Yeah, well, we have at least 60,000 volunteers across the country. In fact, I've heard a recent statistic that might be even higher this year. So uh, we have volunteers that obviously are on the, on the builds. We have volunteers that are in our restore program. We have volunteers within our board of directors and so on. But we have to... Uh, really applaud the effort of these volunteers across the country, like 60,000 of them coming together and, and helping families in their community and changing lives. It's, it's fantastic. What about the land that these houses are yeah. built on? How do you get access to that? How do you acquire it? Yeah, well, it's various means. And so we have uh, 54 affiliates across the country. So most of the time the land is accessed through a local effort. It could be a number of things. Years ago, uh, there was more opportunity for land to be donated or purchased quite reasonably. Uh, the market has changed quite significantly for us. Uh, but So sometimes it'll be a municipality that will have surplus property, and so the affiliate will, uh, like the local habitat, will um, do a deal with the uh, municipality. It might be a local land developer or a private citizen that has some accessible land. Um, uh, we are building... Uh, today some very large developments. Um, we have one in Edmonton that's about 64 units, one in Regina that's 62, 
uh, in the GTA, we have one uh, in Pinery Trail, it's around 50 units. So uh, some of the tracts of land are very large and we've bought them either from municipality, the province, or again, a local developer. Wow. Mm -hmm. Am I right? It, it, Habitat for Humanity has been around for since 1985? In Canada, since 1985, uh, worldwide since 1976, actually. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How many families have you helped over that time? Yeah, so in Canada, uh, specifically, we've helped over 3,300 families find affordable home ownership, but we also help families um, in many other means as well. We do reno projects and uh, different uh, so, uh, solu housing solutions for them that actually have helped many, many more families. But uh, it's specifically to our home ownership program, over 3,300. And then worldwide, uh, just a recent statistic came out that said that we have actually helped over 22 million people around the world. Oh my yeah. goodness. It's one of the largest nonprofits in the world um, right now. Well, we talked about the pride of ownership and the sense of self-worth that that gives somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a whole whole other world of, of return on investment that you get that right. isn't about dollars. T talk to me about that. Yeah, for sure. So one of the most important studies we did in recent times was with the Boston Consulting Group. So from a for-profit perspective, everybody understands ROI or return on investment, right? Uh, so whatever we invest in, we're expecting you know, a generous return from that. Uh, nonprofit works so differently because our impact is really social impact. So the Boston Consulting Group did a study for us called an SROI or a social return on investment. So very simply what they did is they looked at what is the impact that we're making in a community, in society, based on the investment we're making. And it was actually quite substantive. Uh, so in a granular level, uh, for every dollar you invest in Habitat, we return back four dollars. And when you aggregate that, that means for every family that we help, we actually return $175,000 of social benefit back to that specific community. And again, if we aggregate that based on what we do annually, uh, that is close to $50, uh, $50 million a year that we're returning back to Canada, returning back to communities uh, in social benefit. Because they don't have to access the, the programs that that's are available right. to, just to get food or housing. Yeah, that's right. We, we refer to it as sort of inbound effects and outbound effects. So, um, meaning that we are moving people out of social housing sometimes. We're moving them away from food banks and reliance on those kind of social uh, activities or agencies and then outbound means that now uh, because we've stabilized their financial situation they have money to be able to invest in going back to school uh, maybe just putting their kids into soccer uh, they have money to be able to uh, you know invest in their home and in other areas of the community so maybe they're even their education it's incredible yeah Let's talk quickly about that great store, Restore. Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't love that store? Tell That's me right. about that. Yeah, well, Restore is a made in Con Canada concept, actually. It started in Winnipeg, Manitoba a number of years ago. Uh, this concept has actually gone worldwide, but specifically in North America, there are literally hundreds, thousands of, uh, of Restores now. Uh, in Canada specifically, we have about 108 Restores across the country. So. By that concept, I mean that this is a new and used home improvement store. So uh, if you were going to go to your local Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that to get something, uh, we encourage people to drop by our store first because we often have brand new product uh, that you can use for renovating your home might, or furniture. Uh, we have uh, gently used uh, objects as well that you can purchase and use for renovations. Um, this concept now has become one of Canada's largest social enterprises, actually. In fact, uh, this year, our revenue will be close to $75 million across the country from the Restore program. And <clears throat> the beauty of the program is that as a social enterprise, uh, what we're trying to do is not only through that revenue cover the cost of the operations of the store and provide you know, impact in the community, uh, and even an environmental impact in the community, but we take the profit from those stores and that's used to cover a lot of the administrative costs at the local level, which means that when people in the community are giving to Habitat, they're principally giving 
um, maybe not in all cases, but they're principally giving to the projects themselves and to the, uh, the home building itself. So if someone wants more information about Restore mm -hmm. or Habitat for Humanity yeah. or, or anything involved uh, with the organization, where do they go first? Yeah, I think the easiest place to start is really to go to our website, uh, habitat.ca. And if you go there, you'll find out information about the uh, Restore program across the country, how to find a local Restore. You will also find uh, information about your local habitat as well. So as I said before, we have 54 local habitats across the country. Uh, you can use our website to easily identify the one in your community and link to it and find out what activities and opportunities are going on to volunteer or to donate, actually. Such a pleasure yeah. talking with you today. Thanks for being here. Great. Thanks, Val. I appreciate the time.